do have. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Fix. It's the weekly kick of Arm Wrestling's Now. And there is the... Look at that, eh? Fine spec. Who do you think's got that? Oh, I think that lighting's helping you out a lot there, right? To be honest, mate. It's pretty good uh, in there. In a minute, a reason, Ray's going to get up. There was a reason for sitting in the truck. Yeah, Ray, Ray's going to be on the dimmer in a minute. He'll be up there. Getting, oh, there it is. Nice. Some. So, welcome back to the show, guys. We've got... Ramon's my pins and uh, the very sexy half faced <laughs> in the truck. Time is it over there now, mate? Brisbane. Oh, mate, it's uh, nine forty p.m. Nine foot. You still okay though? And we love. Oh, yeah, well, I got, I got, I got some caffeine. So, oh, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. We always end up doing this kind of stuff. Me and Ray, <laughs> look at that. Look healthy. That. That's a European. <laughs> I love listening to these shows where it says European. Oh, they're very professional. European, I'm professional. not like the Yanks. Very professional. Uh, Nothing good out. comes out of Australia. I don't know. Mate. I don't know. Where's Nicole Kidman from? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. he was all right. He seriously, out of ten, I'd give her one. When uh, the, the 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 best thing out of Australia, obviously, Tesh, number one. Yes, really? Yep. Oh, that's that's got to be it, hasn't it? Do you think that Australia is ever going to be a dominant force in arm wrestling, though, mate? Because you've travelled a long way in a short period of time, and there's quite a lot of you. Do I, me? Do I think yeah, so? Yeah, do you think, do you think Australia is going I to do. be a force? I, 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 think, I think five years from now, we have uh, three or four guys that are world-respected among elites. Who are the, um, who's, the talk <clears> there, maybe. Mate? who's the guys that are going to go out and, and do that? Obviously, um, yourself, Jordan, got to be in there. Yeah, myself, Jordan, Lachlan, Tesh. If Tesh bounces back from his from his life problems that he's got at the moment, if he ever um, comes down from Olympus. Yeah, and then there's I, I, I'm not entirely confident in the guys in the other states, but they may produce one or two as well. How good's Ben Carroll? Ben Carroll's a powerhouse. Uh, he's very, very strong, and he's still discovering himself. He like. He finished fifth at Zloty in the in the supers, yeah, having won, right. he won his last four matches with a flop press, and he'd never flop pressed in his life, and he he just brought it out on Zloty for because his hand was gone. He normally just tries to cup, drag, and and find a top roll, um, and once his hand was gassed, he just went well, let's flop press. So he demonstrated that he has enough horsepower to very using very ugly technique um, still get good results. So I think Ben. I think Ben will go a long way, but he's the Kiwi. He's not an Aussie. Bill, there you go. Little known fact. I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know he was a Kiwi. Wow. What 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 what, what part of Australia is he based in? Uh, he is lives he in Western in Australia. So he lives yeah. in WA at the moment. But yeah, he's a Kiwi. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Does he pull in the Aussie nationals or no? Um, he hasn't for a long time. Uh, we the last time we saw him pull was in the Arnold's Classic, which is kind of our Oceanic Championship. Um, he he took second place to um, Matai Warangi Heda Morris from New Zealand. So Big Matt from New Zealand's always had his measure, always had Ben's measure. But Ben Ben is a Ben has been able to beat Ryan Scott, the Milkman. Um, so Ben's right there. There's like three or four guys. There's really Matt Warangi from. New Zealand, Ben Carroll from New Zealand, Ryan Scott and Lachlan Adair. They're our supers that are relevant. Now, if you look at Latvia, their entire nation, they've only got about eight arm wrestlers. All of them are good. <laughs> yeah, we have we, we have some good talent right now. You really do, though, don't you? I mean, let's be honest. You've got some, you got some killers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Our overall classes are just, when, when everyone shows up, it's just brutal. It's just yeah. Who is the absolute? Who's the man over there at the moment? Is that Rimkis? No, no, no. Rimkis is Lithuanian. Thompson. Thompson. Oh, excuse Thompson's me. Man. Norman Thompson's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Second would be Sam Shedis, uh, Latvian no, wonder. Yeah, he won yeah, Lothian. Yeah. What about yeah. him? And and uh, third would be Vlad. Vlad. Uh, Vlad so Vlad at the moment is <clears throat> is a little bit bigger, isn't he? But ninety now is he? Oh, no, no, no. He's 84, 85. Wow, he's I thought he just built enough. like a truck. No, he's just he built like so a truck. He's so much more muscled than he did. He's only, no, he's he's only what, he's five foot five? Times, I think. Oh, uh, no, he's taller than me. No, 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 no. He's, feet tall. he's one, one meter 80, something like that. Something Get out yeah. of here. No way. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't believe that for a moment. No, I don't believe. I believe he is still in a child's like bath. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think he can see over the kitchen sink. Yeah. No, no. Blood, blood, blood is taller. I'm, I'm one seventy. Blood is taller than me. At least I'm seen. You're telling me that Vlad doesn't still use like one of those steps when he goes to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I have Vlad at like three feet tall and like three feet wide. <laughs> Yeah, he's all, all, all arms, no oh, no, man. no legs, so. Yeah, he's sticky muscles, didn't he? There's no doubt about yeah, that. No, he's just built for this sport. Yeah. So what about uh, Raimon Zontanovic? You know, uh, that, that, that guy. That... Oh, yeah, Ra- Raimon, uh, right now, because he hasn't competed in Latvia since uh, Zloty and we took him out from ratings and everything, uh, yeah, he would uh, be somewhere with the right arm. Left arm isn't on that point, but again, we have Raimon, uh Myself, we have Yanis, we have Kaspar Zgaravis, uh, and, and Tuom Suozi, some other guys. It's like at least 10, 12 guys that would just, uh, just like slow increases in power, you know. It's, yeah. How, do you, how uh, do you go with Ramon Zantanovic? That, you know, that, that oh, guy that beat him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I never beat him. I have never beaten him. With, with left arm, now I have more choices, but... <laughs> Yeah, but his his arm is so huge. You know, oh, he's mate. like his hand is like this, and he just gets you in position. I want a, I he, want another go in Raymond's. I, I I lost that that round. He eliminated me from Zlotti, and I felt like if that was a super match, I would have had a had a good chance. <laughs> Again, I, I would say look the I'm match versus for- Joe Fox. He would have done the same thing to you. He just worked on that wrist. Until in the I honestly don't know where Joe Fox is at relative to me. I, I'd never, I've never met Joe Fox before. I don't, I don't know. Joe Fox, Joe Fox did well at Zlotti. I think he got an easier draw than me. I had Ali Enkov round one. Joe Fox had an Indian guy. Um, so and I think he just got a better, better opening. Of opening. course, of course, he was yeah. lucky. Yeah, he's. Uh, I would say Raymond's also got lucky. Like uh, from Ra- Ra- Raimond is so incredibly built for this sport, though. I mean, oh, he is yeah. one of the chosen ones. He's the Jordan yeah. Sill. He's the Rob Bidgent yeah. Junior. Yeah. You know, he's but just. I know, I know that I said to you, Ray. I think even maybe in the weeks after Zlotty, when we were, when I was talking about that match, that I said I felt that if I could have taken it inside, that there was something. And you chuckled at me and said you would never get it inside. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm like. When he wasn't that good at that time, now he's super preparing for 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 because they haven't cancelled top eight. It's they they think it's yeah. still gonna happen in June. So wow. like the gym is closed. He took all the stuff he needs. I let him train. He trains in his garage and uh, he just keeps on building. He's he's one of those guys that's been dominating Latvian 90 kilo for I don't know 15 years. Of course, mm-hmm. he's not getting any younger, but that hand is one tough. Thing to to win oh, yeah. when you don't when when your hand isn't that strong. If if Raimond gets you here, it's super hard to beat him. And again, mm. it's uh, everyone has tried. We have tried so many times, all of us. Like past year, he beat Vlad. He has beaten Jan so mm. many times with the right arm, and it, it is that hand control. Yeah, inside would be or pressing style would be one of the ways to beat him. But I just think he's too complete. Too complete for that. Right. Well, he's on my he's on my wish list for like 2021 or something like that. I'd I'd love a I'd love a super match with Raymond sometime. <laughs> right, right after you crack, Herman. Herman. Yeah. He, who, who is the bum? <laughs> Everyone. The bum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what's going on with Corona? Are we uh, what, what's happening? That's what we were going to talk about. That's it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was something. We, honestly, we we have one minute left in the show, so let's talk yeah, about well, Corona. Now, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, Ramons, you obviously hit on it then, mate. You've given all the weights, you've given everything that's in the gym to Antonovic, and he's gone off and he's doing his thing. How much do you think it's possible to maintain or even improve your level when you're not able to actually compete against other pullers? Honest opinion. Uh, I would say it depends on where you are. If you are a beginner, one, two year, uh, I would say one year even. Like it's very hard to build those strength lines. And this is I have seen so many guys that train alone. They live super incredibly crazy way. 
but they don't get that arm, you know, arm wrestling part, and they broke their arms. So, but when you're, you know, your technique, you just keep keep on building, keep on building. And when you take away that uh, that exhaustion from uh, table practice, you can still improve. So right now, just just before I went inside, we were arm wrestling with Giannis for an hour and a half. I'm the uh, he's he and I are the only person I see throughout the week. So we just did training, then we arm wrestled for an hour and a half, and now I'm here. So if you can still manage to get some training done, I think this is the best best time ever to work on some tough decisions. And what I say tough decisions is when you're training and there are parts that you're going to neglect, you know, you're going to focus on bigger stuff. So now you can focus on that smaller stuff and just decrease those weaknesses. So I, I, I see this as an opportunity for everyone. It doesn't matter what kind of equipment you have. You can still do good training, a lot of training. Of course, we, we don't have a chance to arm wrestle, maybe with anyone, with everyone, but uh, I don't see this as a bad thing. I see this as an opportunity. Well, you've certainly got more opportunity to um, almost plan your training. Uh, that, that aspirational thing is when, oh, I'd, lo- I'd love to be, almost like Ryan, I'd love to be that guy who's a professional arm wrestler that wakes up and you can arm wrestle and you can train weights and you can work all the fundamental elements of your game that you need to do break it down through the day and almost train like a professional soccer player or a professional footballer, a professional yeah. fighter, you know, does this give everybody more chance to do that in a way? And certainly most people, it's, it's hard to make yourself an excuse, isn't it? Brian. Brian was going to jump <laughs> it, in it there. Is, I, I, I do agree. Yeah. I think I'm seeing it across social media that I'm seeing it pretty consistently that people are saying they're training harder and, in the last couple of weeks than they've ever been able to before. And I think that's a good thing. Um, for me, for me, this period of time so far has been a very good chance to audit my game um, because there's no travel, because I've, I've now got a very solid block of training ahead of me, as mm-hmm. do we all. I've, I've taken the, ch- the chance to, to really thoroughly prepare and uh, audit my own training and, and my own strengths and weaknesses. And, for me, when what I what what Zloty identified for me last year, uh, I went into the Zloty tour with great what I'm calling finishing power numbers in the gym. Um, but as Krasimir Kostadinov said to me over there, he said, "Your finishing your your numbers in the gym are great, but you're starting in positions that you you don't get to start in in a tournament." So I have audited, and I'm now starting in super strict, and I'm really breaking down all those little different fundamental movements that we do off the start when you're in a super strict position. Yep. And and I'm then applying those same things to the Todd Hutchins training method that he has me on. And um, and I, I feel excited by having such a solid training block because I can really thoroughly go through and prepare and, and fix the, the problems in my game better than I've ever been able to before. And, and, and obviously you've put a massive amount of... Um emphasis on the Todd Hutchins thing and mm. that, that strength. <clears throat> yeah. Now, I know from previous conversations that it was Jordan Davis and training with Jordan that have made you sort of direct yourself on that path a little bit because it was a big hole in your game. But the thing yeah. I wanted to ask both of you individually was where do you attribute the biggest advantage in, in, in these times when we're locked away? Do you think it should be that everything starts with the hand and wrist? It starts with the, the weakest link? Or do you think it's a better time to gain the real power movements? And why I say that is because often most arm wrestlers end up competing on injuries. They end up competing with injuries because of the fact that you go into tournaments and you've been trying to train something red line, something real heavy. It does damage. There's no way around it. Whereas a lot of the time you're training your hand and wrist on things, it's actually pretty good for for repairing tissue for for getting yourself so you're not having to exert you can work that when other things are damaged you've got pain in your elbow you've got pain in your shoulder where would you say is is the biggest emphasis going to come or should come should it be power or should it be the small elements I would say it's individual like for everyone it's different so like, like, like as you said if you keep on working some power moves and you get some injuries there, this is the time to fix those injuries and focus on something else. And if everything is fine and you need, you lack that power, and if you have a chance to train it. So 
mix it up. It's really individual, in my opinion, mm. especially at this time. Like, just focus on stuff that you wouldn't focus that much when you're preparing. Like, when we're preparing, like, these numbers, like, uh, Ryan is famous with his vectors, and he's focused on weight because weight gives him feeling that he's strong, and that is very, very important. And you don't want to lift super, like, light weight. It, it's not good for your head. You're like, oh, my God, I'm shit, you know? So mm. now now you can feel a little bit like shit, you know? You know what? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You're not letting them eat you up as much. For me, um, I'll give you a little insight into how I've audited my, my current numbers in the gym. I went through and discovered what my one rep maxes were on back pressure, on raw side pressure and down pressure. And then I, and, and that was with a cheat start, with a total cheat start. So I just wanted to work out what's my elbow worth. And I discovered down pressure, 62 and a half kilos was my one rep max. Side pressure, 65 kilos was my one rep, one rep max. And um, back pressure, 57 and a half kilos was my one rep max with, with a cheat start in relation to my hand and wrist. Mm-hmm. I then went and reassessed all of those things when I started strict and I said, well, shit, I need to close that gap. So straight away, I, 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 don't, I personally don't think there's much point in me currently training to increase those cheat starts until my strict starts is at least equal with those. So for, for me right now, strict starts is where it's at. Um, but that said, all of that would change if I knew specifically which opponent I was taking on next, if I believed I was going to set the hook, no worries. And I needed more finishing power. But when I'm, when I'm generically training, I I, I take a more holistic approach. I was just going to say the big thing there is, you know, it's like the old adage, isn't it? Very good, but brick not hit back. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope someone will take our advice and not just uh, keep running in the wall. The, 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 well, yeah, the, the, the 40 percent thing, whichever way you look, you can, no, there's two ways, you know, you've had a lot of, you've had a lot of stones cast at that particular uh, glass house, mate. But what I will say is this, um, if you're stronger, you're stronger, you're stronger. You just are. Mm. So there's never a negative from being stronger. Whenever yeah. you've traveled that path to get yourself, a, a, you know, more power and however much negativity is thrown your way as a result of that, you're still further along that route. What you have got to do then is obviously just find a way to direct it. You know, if you get to a situation where you've built a car with a massive engine that can generate an enormous amount of power, you've just got to find a way to keep the mother on the road you know mm. whether it's big tires whether it's better suspension whether it's better whatever it is it's just finding that but you've not lost anything you're always progressing yeah. so it's a finding process you know it's, it's it's and best example of that is you need i think you need to tune into that mentally as an arm wrestler because the reality of the situation is you're going to encounter some really rough road along the way i mean mm. um you know serious injuries can happen do happen Injuries with fundamental areas of your game that maybe make you change the, your direction, your path. It's coming. In any, yeah. uh, we spoke about this quite a bit, Ryan, when I was saying, you know, when you were doing the 44% stronger thing, saying that the, the only thing you've got to be careful of is watch that elbow. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you can end up yeah. blowing it out. There's, and, no, there's, no, there's no doubting that um, Todd's method of training, uh, of programming for training, does do, does put your elbow on the line, and um, Todd Todd has Todd said he's given his program to a lot of people over the years, and where people go wrong is they fall in love with just the sexy lifts, they do just the one at maxes, and they don't do all the volume. I get people on my YouTube channel often commenting, saying, "You're not doing Todd's program, Ryan. You're just doing the one at maxes." They don't see that 80% of my gym time in the day is volume, 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 rehabbing my elbows. Sure. Um, Todd has me rehabbing my elbows so much. It's ridiculous. Like it's, it is 80% of my gym time is spending rehabbing my elbows because, um, that, that is the biggest priority. And, and Todd, Todd is a, Todd is a believer that, uh, his system, he's stuck with it for 25 years. And he's, he says he's never had elbow issues throughout it. So, um, 
yeah, I, I believe the man because he's walked the walk and, and he's still where he is today. So I trust it. And I do, I put the volume in my, and, and yes, my elbows do hurt when I'm doing one at maxes. Um, like when I did that press one at max the other day and the, the flooding pain through my elbow, that deep throb was immense, but I've been doing hitting volume since. And honestly, it still feels pretty good. And, and then there's the Todd approach where Todd says to me, pain doesn't equal weakness weakness equals weakness and that that mindset right there was something that scared me at first but through the one rep max training i actually started to believe it because todd would say even if you are sore you can still hit the same one rep max numbers if you just freaking do it and and you actually i have actually discovered in myself that even in the presence of inflammation i can still be as strong if i have to be does pain equal longevity though yeah, I agree with you there. It doesn't. Mm. It's a balance. It's balance in those thoughts all the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there, is the, there, is the, there is the mindset that, you know, it's the old video game analysis, isn't it? You get the guy that's got the... the umble- and, and I'm going to make this analysis a little bit, bit more deeply, okay? you got that video game. If you're designing a player to play a video game, do you design him with one unbelievable knockout right hand? Or do you design him so that he can beat anyone with any move at any given time? He's not got that absolute red line power, you know? And if you're setting your stall out for super match arm wrestling, for tournament arm wrestling, you've got to design yeah. it differently. I and go, I'll the story I go, to that, okay? I go, one, I, I go 100. I put all my points on cup, all of them. If I'm designing a character, you put I would, I, if I was, if I had the strongest wrist flexion among all arm wrestlers, I think I could have the weakest of everything else, and I'd still be the man to beat. Mm-hmm. Against a lot of against a lot of opponents, yeah. Just, just cup, just like, just like. I mean, that's kind of John, isn't it? John was was the king of cup. Mm, I disagree. I think John sometimes yeah. underrates himself in that respect. And only because when you see the chips down with John, which didn't mm-hmm. happen a great deal. I mean, a lot of people make references to John in John's wins. And a lot of the time, John's wins were comfortable because he took so much and he had so much everywhere else. I actually think that John was the guy who may not have been the very best in any given position, but was like a nuts behind the very best in all of them, you know. So he always had that fallback position. So he, he had, he just had more points to allocate. Yes, yeah. game. and what it was that he would put somebody into a. Let's say you were stronger than John in the hook, which, for example, Gary Goodridge was at certain parts in his career. You know, he would smash into John. John would hold him up. He wouldn't win, but he'd hold him up. You know, he'd get major, major problems. And then as the match progressed, John had other looks. And he yeah. had other looks within the match. And I think that's what works for you well, Ryan, and worked for me at, at certain parts of my career. If you've got a situation where when the match is live, mm. you're much more fluid. You can do much more. Hence the yeah. no limits thing with Devon Larratt. Because the early Devon Larratt, um, where he was far more open to that, may not have been as brutally as effective as he can be now and as ugly in, in, in his effectiveness as he is now. But what he did have was an amazing versatility. And yeah. I think that the guy who's got the endurance and unbelievable versatility is a very, very difficult adversary. You know, really I, tough. I, 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 train, I train that way because simply because I believe I am smack bang in the middle when it comes to the biomechanical levers that yeah. I have. I, I'm not tall, I'm not short. I haven't got a big hand or a small hand. Mm-hmm. So for me, that, that I just had to prepare for everyone. So I tried to develop a balanced uh, strength allocation for myself. If I was shaped like Jordan Davis, I'd, I wouldn't be training the way I do. I'd train much more specifically into a, into a, into a, into a specific attack. Um, Sasha Andreev, for instance, he's not going to be training to, to, to lead okay. in top role and all that sort of stuff. It's just not going to happen. Um, but it's funny so because right. when you pulled with Antonovics in the Zloty tour, you know, <clears throat> I was reading a lot of the comments online after and say, oh, yeah, Ryan's trained this, he trained that, but he couldn't stop that. He couldn't do it. And what was honestly going through my mind at that time was that's a little bit cruel, that assessment, because 
that guy that he just got top rolled by, it's really, really hard to not get top rolled by for anyone. You know, I've yeah. seen ex excellent arm wrestlers get top rolled by that guy. Uh, yeah. Antonovic is a lethal top roller. He's made well, for I would, I like on Raymond Zantanovic, I like this is giving away kind of what I would do in a super match against him. But round one, round one, I, um, outside of the straps, uh, I could feel his hand dominance. I could feel it. Uh, I had to put all my effort into keeping my wrist up and posting hard to get, to get to the strap. Um, I was happy that I got to the strap because I wasn't sure I, I was going to be able to, because I could feel his hand was dominant. Um, in the, in the straps, I would have really round two. I would have really dropped. Oh, sorry. It, the round I lost, I still tried to top roll in straps. I still tried. Um, if I set my wrist up, dropped my thumb down, really got my forearm close to him and just was willing to be like a Danny Tesh, willing to let him still take my wrist but just be in a stronger position for where I was, I feel like I can pull there. Like like I did against Anil Najran in, in the first my first ever super match, mm -hmm. I feel like I can pull there. And the way that Todd's trained me, I actually feel like, I may be able to outlast Raymond Antonovich in that position and chip onto his bicep, chip onto his bicep, um, despite not having... That is quite possible, because one thing you do have is that endurance card. One yeah. thing you do have, it's just whether you ever get near enough to him when he's in such a dominant position, whether you can yeah. close that strength gap. Because obviously, positionally... There's a Look huge. Ray. He's well, I mean, I, you know, he's probably thinking the same as me. It's, it's. You've got to, you've got to close to to get someone of that level to close that strength gap is not easy, you know. Yeah. And and that's the issue. In order for the endurance to start to kick in, you got to make yeah. him be working as hard as you, and that is, it's difficult, mate. Very difficult. Well, yeah. Well, the, what what I felt with Ray was that he he took control in the straps, um, but it took him. It took him, he wasn't able to just pin me straight off. Um, there was a sticking point where I was working harder than he was, but he still wasn't able to get through. And mm. it was just a matter of time. He did three or four surges and then it was done. Um, if I set my hand and wrist differently, um, I wouldn't have been bleeding as quickly as I was in that circumstance. And that yep. may have may have closed that gap enough that you talk about. Um, he didn't feel impossibly strong. That's that was why I, I felt something that was like yeah look there's there's options there's there's still options and over a six round there's plenty of options so now Ray um, are the glasses going on for the response or are you leaving them <laughs> off? Oh no I, I just look I, I will leave this where it is I will leave this where it is I I I, I will I don't believe first of all that uh, you would stop him in book Diamond is too smart he's he he doesn't have one weapon he has many weapons. First of all, it's very hard to win someone in a six-round super match when you don't have hands, and someone who has not only good side pressure but good back pressure, good pronation, good everything. So he would he would stick in your arm, bleed you out first two rounds. There was nothing left in for next four. That, um, that's my prediction. Unless, from, unless from knowing. your arm strength is significantly more than theirs. Uh, okay, okay, of course, of course. If you've yeah. got more arm yeah. strength than they have, for example, yeah. Todd Hutchins, Marcio Bobosa, Yoshi Kanai Rombath, I've seen guys get to a situation where they are in a fundamentally terrible position, even by their standards, even a guy that pulls a little bit in that, in that position, they're in a bad spot. They don't want to be there. They've lost the control of the supination, pronation, and yet... They are just a stronger human. End of. That guy is still in. It's like the puncher's chance in boxing. You still have that shot as long as you can fling a bomb. If it lands, it's on. What I'm sceptical about is whether at this stage that would be the situation. I, I don't think it would be at this point in time, um, but I don't know. Can you get strong enough to make that the situation, Ryan? I, I don't know, mate. Yeah. I think it, if, of course it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. If I if I had a match, if I knew I was taking on Raymond's, I would be training Todd Hutchings' style. Like <laughs> when I say his style, I'm already training his style, but I would be training for losing my wrist. I would not try to close the gap on my hand. I would just be making my arm stronger, for sure. Interesting stuff. 
Um, who's most important match right now on the on the sort of horizon, mate, for you? Because a while back when we talked about this, and it was Justin Bishop, you know, after mm-hmm. BLM, when you once you slap the lemon about, yeah, well, yeah you're in the sweets. you know, that that's. Uh, <laughs> Are you still as focused on that match for real? Is that the one? Is it is BLM? Uh, well, well, B- BL- BLM. Like I- I've kind of put the the trash talk on BLM on ice because it's it's. I don't. I just don't know when it's going to come up um, with WAL. I don't. I don't know if the season's going to even happen. I don't know. So I, I've kind of left that. I don't want to keep on going on it if it's just not going to happen for a while. So, um, but when BLM, if BLM comes back up. I'm I'm on it again. I do feel very confident against BLM. Um, if if I if it went the way that I thought, honestly, Justin is still very much a thing for me. It's it, there are other names out there that I really love the idea of pulling as well. But there's just like I feel like if I didn't pull Justin, it would be a real missed opportunity to to tell a great story. Um, mm-hmm. I think Justin and I both love the match and. Uh, I think I think as time goes by, he knows he's going to lose more and more. <laughs> Ooh, he's only gone wading in. Ladies and gents, we're at the thirty-one minute mark, and that pretty much brings this second episode of the fix to a close. But listen, guys, this is a weekly element. We're going to be doing this every week. Myself, Ramon's, and and, and Ryan are going to be here every week, and we want you to give us a lift. Send us in. What send it to to Raymond's if you're if you're a you know if you're a coach Ray guy, tell him tell him what you want to dis- you want us to discuss. If you're in the the ginger camp, send it over to Ryan. Let it let him know what you want us to discuss, and we'll bring it on here. It can be anything. No holds barred. Let us know. Um, you know if it's something really bad. Trust me, we'll just tell you to cough. But if it's not, <laughs> you never know. We might even discuss it on here. Fjorka aside, guys, thanks for your time and uh, thanks for checking us out. Remember, if you like what we do. Just like it, share, subscribe, and uh, tell all your mates. And we will be back Sounds with good. the fix. Come on, lads. How do we, how do we start it? Let's see the angles. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've got you again, Ray. I've got you again. Love this lighting. Some <laughs> oh, magic. <laughs> Ladies and gents, we hope you and your families are safe during these weird ass times. And check us out again soon. All the best. Take it easy, please. Stay safe.